Next up on the Mutual Audio Network, fiction from our future. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. This is a presentation from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. This council of war is now in session. Will the officer of the court please present the particulars of this action? (laughs) Officer Adam Morgan, would you please approach, sir? Oh, oh, that's me. Sorry, sir. I was, um, playing my portable playbot at Tetris Universe 2. But, uh, you're not interested in that, uh, are you? Sorry, sir. Um, I- I'll approach the bench now. <clears throat> it-, it is the company's desire, praise the company, praise, praise the, the company, company, to wage all-out war on its competitors in an effort to procure a stranglehold on the current galactic market due to the recent drop in company stock, praise the company, praise the, the company. company. It is therefore left to this council to decide if this action is justified and to decide if this action shall indeed be carried out. Thank you, sir. Praise the company. Praise Praise the the company! company! Will the officer of the court please call the first speaker to the stand? (laughs) Oh, 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 that's that's me again, isn't it? (laughs) Right. <clears throat> the council calls Officer Red and Officer Green to the stand. A moment, please, Officer Adam Morgan. Um, why are you calling two witnesses at once? Because they're a multiform being from the swamps of Wayne on the planet Messier in the northernmost region of the Kuiper Belt with two independent heads, sir. Oh, um, well then, carry on. Officer Adam Morgan? <laughs> well, not that. Carry on with your job. Oh, yes, right. Yes, sir. Praise the company, sir. Praise, Praise the, the company. company. Will Officer Red and Officer Green please take the stand? Thank you. Well, sir, uh, uh, sirs, will you please speak your case? Um, a moment, sir? Yes, Officer Adam Morgan. Well, sir, begging the council's pardon, but this is not Officer Red and Officer Green. It isn't? Well, then, name yourself, sirs. Who are you? I am your worst nightmare, sir. I am the Crimson Avenger, and we're here to put a stop to what you're doing. (laughs) Ha ha! Who? are listening to the much-anticipated season finale, the episode that almost wasn't Robots of the Company, number 312, Banana Republic, written by Jonathan Patrick Russell.
We're quite a team, eh? We sure are, Maxie. We're the best team, and we just cleaned the ship. We're done! Now what? Didn't you say something about fighting crime after we were through fighting grime? Oh, yeah, that's right. We have to seek out and take on the dreaded Dr. Grease Monkey. Oh, he sounds like a tough opponent, Briscoe lad. Oh, he is. Trust me. Where might we find him, do you suppose? The last time I faced him, he was in the bowels of the ship, somewhere lost in the wastelands of Cargo Bay 1. It may not be easy finding him, and I'm sure he's been hatching an evil plan to take over the galaxy, but I know you and I will be able to defeat him, just as long as we remain loyal to each other forever. Are you still playing that old superhero game, Briscoe? Huh? That old one where you fight Dr. Grease Monkey. Ooh. <laughs> but I do fight Dr. Grease Monkey, Chinwipe. He's my arch enemy. Sure he is, kid. And I'm the ruler of a primitive tribe on an alien planet. You are? Sure, kid. You bet. Is what she says true, Briscoe lad? Is Dr. Grease Monkey a figment of your imagination? A what? Is Dr. Grease Monkey a fake? Trust me, Maxie, he's as real as me and you! And what could be more real than a couple of bots aboard a deep space vessel inhabited by a bunch of crazy bots who can't tell the difference between what's real and what's not? Um, yeah. Okay. I'm with you, mate. No worries. And now, coming to you live from the Rockefeller Center in Newark, New York City, it's the Robot News Update with your dueling news anchors, Fizz Gizzit and Frank Meltdown! This just in, it seems that all contact has suddenly been lost from the company. Whoa, this is big news. What do you suppose is up, Frag? Well, Fizz, I simply don't know. Not only do I not know what you're talking about, but I don't care either. See how that works right there? You're useless, Frag. You know that, right? I don't even care enough to comment on that, Fizz. That's just how unimportant anything you ever say is to me. And in other news... There is apparently a galaxy-wide panic setting in due to the lack of communication by the company. And you may have noticed that since there is no contact with the company, that I haven't been saying anything like praise the company, because apparently I don't have to live in fear of any reprisal since the company seems to be non-existent. Does this signal the end of the war? The one that never really even started? We'll have an update on all this and more just as soon as we can think of more to tell you. Bite me, Fizzgizzit. You wish, Frag. You wish. And now a report from our roving reporter as we again present the final Rob report of the season. Take it away, Rob. <laughs> That's the news for this week. 
I really hope you die a slow and painful death really soon, Fizzgizzard. I really, 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 really do. You're a real charmer, aren't you, Frag? All the ladies tell me so. Why do I not believe that? What is that aggravating noise? Oh, hey, TD. We're picking up some kind of distress signal. We're trying to decipher it. I think it's a homing beacon, Captain. A homing beacon? Homing in on what? Let me have a look. There we go. It's a ship of some kind. A small shuttle. We better track through them and let them in. I don't know. I mean, we are at war after all. It could be some kind of trap. Oh, if it is, trust me, we'll be ready for them. I've been aching for a scrap for some time. Oh, all right then. Let's bring him in, Payload. Hey, hey, Captain. Hey, who the heck are you? Oh, hi. My name is Kika. I'm a messenger bot. I've been sent here by the company with orders. Orders? What orders? Hey, you better explain yourself before you go barking orders on my ship. It's all quite simple, really. I was deployed upon the company's disappearance. Myself and others like me were set up months in advance, just in case communication was ever lost with the company. Praise the company. Huh? I think I can shed some light on this situation. Kika here is clearly part of a company contingency plan known as Operation Last Resort. The idea was that if contact was ever lost with the company for any reason during this non-conflict, that a number of messenger bots would be sent out to send the fleet their last orders, probably containing attack plans, or even self-destruct orders. How the hell do you know all this stuff, GD? Yeah, who are you, GD? Are you a secret double agent or something? Are you working undercover for them? Are you Stosky or a Hutch? Can you cook? What? I am French. What sort of question do you expect me to ask? <laughs> oh, hello, Briscoe. You're certainly geared up. Heading off on holiday? Yeah, we're just off on a six-month hike to Cargo Bay 1 to fight my arch nemesis, Dr. Grease Monkey. You want to come? Wish I could, but I have to recalibrate the engines. Seems Captain Putch is in a hurry to get the Titan 1 home. Oh, well, maybe next time then. Sounds like a long hike ahead of you. I hope it's fun for you. Well, it'd be a lot more fun if we had some faster way to get there, like some sort of mana transmission device. You don't say. Don't I? I thought I just did. Just hang on a moment there, B. I, I may have just the thing. Really? Yep, here you go. I invented this a few months back. I got bored one day and decided to work on theory. I didn't figure anyone would ever have any use for it. But here you go. It should shave six months off your trip to Cargo Bay 1. Oh boy, thanks Boffin. No problem, little mate. Oops, I think I forgot to show him how to use that teleportation device. If he sets the controls for too wide a band, there's no telling what will happen. Oh well. I'm sure nothing could possibly go wrong. Alright, enough of this. Now, are you trying to tell us that the company is no more? That's not true. Take it back. Hey, hey, calm down. I was only asking. <clears throat> okay, uh, Kika, then watch your message from the company, and just in case they're still listening, praise the company! Your orders are... Yes? Classified. What? But, but, I'm the captain! I am to give these orders to just one particular bot, and I don't see him here, so I'm afraid I can't tell you. Merd. Oh boy, it's gonna be one of those days.
sure this is gonna work, Briscoe lad? Oh, it comes from Boffin. What could possibly go wrong? Hey, I wonder what this dial is for. I wouldn't go fooling around with that, Briscoe lad. No telling what will happen. Yeah, you're probably right. But, uh, who am I kidding? <laughs> Curiosity always gets me in the end. And what did Curiosity do to the cat? Um, I don't re- Oh, yeah, I do. Squeak's cat got curious about the power couplers one day. And? He blew himself up. But I'm sure everything will be fine this time. Um, Briscoe lad. <laughs> oh, cool! Briscoe! Briscoe! Hey, what's that noise? What? What's happening to me? I'm transparent. This really can't be good. Oh, here we go. I always knew you guys would get me killed. I should have stayed on that crashed vessel months back. What a fool I am. I really hate you guys. Oh, shit! Where the hell are we? We're certainly not in Kansas anymore. We were never in Kansas, chum. Are you sure, Payload? Um, uh, oh, yes, you're quite correct. But I sure wish we had been. Shut up, Zimtron. This is serious. What do we do, boss dude? Well, the first thing we gotta do is assess the situation. Take roll call, Shinwai. You got it, Captain. <clears throat> Payload. Here. Zimtron? I think I'm here. Though my head is rumbling at the moment. So it's really hard to tell. Thanks for that report, Zimtron. So anyway, GD? GD? Okay then, how about Popsicle? Uh, Sphinx? Anyone seen Sphinx? Nope, not for a while. And I'd like to keep it that way, to be honest. So, did I just say that out loud? We seem to have a problem, Captain. Oh? It seems at least half the crew are missing. But I'm here! Oh, goody. I wonder what happened to them. And I wonder where this place is. Look at this place. It's weird. Clearly, we're still on the ship. But there are all these trees and vines, and what are they doing here? They seem to be full of bananas, boss. Now, why is that significant? It's because we're now in the bowels of the ship. We're in his domain! Briscoe, where'd you spring from? She was trying to be stealthy. How do you know a word like stealthy, Briscoe, my boy? A word like what? Oh, forget it, you two. Briscoe, why were you trying to be quiet? So I could sneak up on him. Him? Him who? Welcome, my friends. You are all now citizens of the Banana Republic. The what? Silence, or I'll turn you into spare parts. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. So, Prisco, my old arch nemesis, we meet again at last. And now, you are going to perish. <laughs> cool! I've always wanted to go to France! No! Not Paris, you imbecile! Perish! It means you will die. And by my hand, Briscoe. Not so fast, Dr. Grease Monkey. 
I've acquired a new sidekick since our last meeting. <laughs> oh, you mean the little one there in your pocket? Yes, his name is Maxi, and we're the bestest friends in the world. No power in the universe is stronger than that. Briscoe, are you alright? Shh, Shinwipe, I have this situation under control. The circle is now complete, young Briscoe. When I left you, I was merely your apprentice. I have learned much, and so now, I am the master. Only a master of evil, monk. I warn you, if you strike me down... What? What will you become? Scrap metal? I'm so scared. <laughs> Enough of this posturing. I have a secret, Brisco. Oh, don't try that old trick, monk. I know you're not my father. <laughs> you are quite correct. But I wasn't about to attempt to trick you. No. I was about to reveal my secret weapon. Look behind this curtain. Oh, my electronic gods. But I haven't revealed it yet. Oh, sorry. I was just listening to As the Galaxy Drifts on my iPod. Would you believe it? Rustle 15 really is the father of Excalibrator 5's baby bot. But that's unbelievable. And I'm missing it for this? Never mind. I just remembered. I'm taping it. And you've ruined it for me. Now I'm even angrier. So, look behind here. What is it? I recognize that. It's the MIME machine from ages back. That's right. It's my mentally incapacitated mechanized envoy. It was sent here weeks ago to me. <laughs> and now I can reveal its true purpose. Which is... Self-destruction. You see, I plan to use this machine to destroy the Titan I, the last of the company's deep space cargo vessels. I won't let you get away with this, Monk! But you can't stop me, Briscoe. No, it's far too late for that. <laughs> Okay, what the devil is going on here? Why would you even want to destroy the Titan One? It's a wreck of a ship. It's got no valuable cargo to speak of. And it's run by the most idiotic crew of bots the universe has ever known. What's more, if you destroy the ship, you destroy yourself. What possible advantage is there in destroying this ship? Um, hmm. Who did like that? And I can really start to see your point. Oh, well, never mind. I'm going to blow up the ship anyway. <laughs> oh, this is just absurd. Not so fast, Grease Monkey. Don't you need a special key to operate the Miami machine? Oh, thank you for reminding me, Captain McNuttage. Me and my big mouth. Maxi, come to me. I obey. <laughs> Maxie, where are you going? Oh, I'm so sorry, Brisco. You see, your little friend has been awaiting my orders all along. Now he works for me! <laughs> no, that's not true! That's impossible! Oh, it's very possible. All he has been waiting for were my orders. And now, he will slip into the mine and activate the self-destruct mechanism. And then we shall all go up. Together! <laughs> no, Maxie, don't do as he says. You're my friend. You're my sidekick. I'm sorry, Briscoe, but this is goodbye. No! <laughs> I die. My reign of terror has ended. You, sir, are a worthy opponent. May I at least know your name before I perish? GT? What a boring name. <coughs> GD, I never thought I'd say this ever. But you just saved us all. 
Well done, GD. And where the hell were you hiding? That's on a strictly need-to-know basis, Captain. Well, Briscoe, it's all over. You did well. <laughs> Boy, never thought I'd say that. GD, you saved my life. But now Maxie is dead. I'm so sad. Now I don't have a sidekick. Don't worry, I'm all right. Hey, why is everyone looking at me like that? Oh, hello there. What's your name? But, but Briscoe... You're cute. Can, can we be friends? You mean it? Yes, I do. Of course we can be friends. I have lots to show you. Let me take you on the tour of the ship. It's the best ship in the whole galaxy. Then I really can't wait to see all of it. Then follow me. Looks like all's well that ends well. Hey, chums? It does? It's really all over? We're really all free? You mean, no more insanity? No more crazy misadventures? No more zaniness? Oh boy, I just knew it was gonna be one of those days. You have been listening to the season finale of Robots of the Company, episode number 312, Banana Republic. Written by Jonathan Patrick Russell, which starred, in order of appearance, Counselor Ingen, Jeff Niles, Officer Adam Morgan, Ari Baranofsky, The Company Chorus, Steve Anderson, Captain John Tatterzak, and Sally Wiggett, Expositron 1, Jim Barber, Expositron 2, Ellie Hirschman, Briscoe, Kyle Bors, Maxie, Jonathan Patrick Russell, Shinwipe, K. Wu, The News Announcer, Jack Ward, Fizz Gizzard and Frag Meltdown, Jonathan Patrick Russell, Rob, Captain John Tatterzak, The Natives, Jonathan Patrick Russell, Boffin, Shane Harris, GD, Ellie Hirschman, Payload, Captain John Tatterzak, Putch, Joe Thomas, Popsicle, Daryl Looney, Zimtron, Jeff Niles, Sphinx, Jim Barber, and introducing Kika, Danny Cutler, with Dr. Grease Monkey, Sally Wiggett. The Robots of the Company theme tune was composed and performed by Daryl Looney. The incidental music was provided by Kevin McLeod, with additional music provided by Daryl Looney and Forcecom. The associate producer was Kay Wu. The sound designer, post-production editor, script editor, executive producer, and director was Jonathan Patrick Russell. The Rob Report was written and produced by Captain John Tatterzak, who retains all rights to the character and concept. The series, Robots of the Company, was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and the copyright is held by Purple Unicorn Productions and its parent company, Dream Realm Enterprises. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the express written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. Special thanks must go to Zeus Powers for his amazing computicular prowess, and to the producer's dear old dad, without whose assistance this episode would not have been possible. And to Jack Ward and Shannon Hilchey, of the Sonic Society for their amazing encouragement and support. Thanks, guys. We interrupt our regularly scheduled credits to bring you this update. We now come to you from DreamRealmSite.com. So join us there on the web from now on. You're unwilling to email us at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com and we could care less. Ha <laughs> ha. I thought I'd talk your ear off during the making of this audiogram. So I'm going to tell you about my store list this week. Well, I bought some new RAM chips. I bought a new computer. I bought more tarp. You can't have enough tarp. Ooh, and I bought one of those pretty little pink bananas. You know, the ones I'm talking about. No? Well, let me tell you all about it. Yes, they are so cute that I could just smush them up against my face and just rub them everywhere. Oh, I love those little things. And let me tell you more about the things that I <laughs> they all think I am dead, my little friend. Yes, Dr. Grace Monkey. But little do they know, I am alive and well. And now, we will carry out my great plan. I am ready to be inserted into the mime machine, Master. <laughs> Nothing in the universe can stop me now!
Copyright 2007. All rights reserved. Happy holidays from all of us here at the Mutual Audio Network.